Welcome to section two. Just what is GDP? Suppose we add up consumer spending on goods and services, investment spending by firms, government purchases of goods and services, and the value of our exports minus our imports. This would give us a measure of the overall market value of goods and services that the economy produces. In other words, it measures our productivity as an economy. How much are we making? This measurement is known as the country's gross domestic product. But before we can explore this concept further, we need to understand the difference between two classes of goods and services. Final goods and services versus intermediate goods and services. Think of a new car. If a consumer purchases a new car from a dealer, that is an example of a final good. A final good is a product sold to a final or end user who will use that good for their own private purposes, not to produce more goods and services to sell. An intermediate good, on the other hand, is not a final finished product. It's an input in the production of a final good or service, like tires or glass that's purchased by a car manufacturer and used to produce cars that they will then sell. So now that we know that, let's get on to the definition of GDP. GDP is the total dollar value of all new final goods and services produced within a country's border in one year's time. There are three ways to calculate GDP. The value added approach surveys firms and adds up the total value of the production of final goods and services in a year. The expenditure approach adds up all the spending on domestically produced final goods and services by the four spending sectors of the economy, consumers, producers, governments, and foreign buyers. This is by far the most common method of calculating GDP, and it will be the one that we focus on the most in this section. Also, there is the income approach, and that adds up the total factor income earned by households in the economy. Factor payments are wages, rent, interest, and profits. Let's explore these methods one at a time. The first method for calculating GDP is to add up the value of all the final goods and services produced in the economy. This calculation excludes the value of intermediate goods and services. Why are intermediate goods and services excluded? Aren't they valuable too? Let's look at an example. Look at this calculation of GDP for the economy of Autotopia. Should we measure the GDP of this economy by adding up the total sales of the iron ore producer, the steel producer, and the auto producer? If we did, we would be counting the value of steel twice. Once when it is sold by the steel plant to the auto plant, and again when the steel auto body is sold to a consumer as a finished car. And we would be counting the value of the iron ore three times. Once when it is mined and sold to the steel company, a second time when it is made into steel and sold to the auto producer, and a third time when the steel is made into a car and sold to the consumer. If we add up the total value of all sales, intermediate and final, we get $34,700. That's $21,500 for the sale of the new car, $9,000 from the sale of the steel, and $4,200 from the sale of the iron ore. But this is double counting, and the value of GDP becomes artificially inflated. To avoid double counting, we only count each producer's value added in the calculation of GDP. Value added is the difference between the value of a firm's sales and the value of the inputs it purchases from other companies. So, the iron ore company has a sales value of $4,200, but it has no intermediate good costs. This gives the ore company a value of $4,200 that they have added to the economy. The steel producer has a sale value of $9,000. If we subtract the intermediate good cost of the iron ore, that's $4,200, that gives us a value added to the economy of $4,800. The car maker has a sales value of $21,500 from selling the car. If we subtract out the intermediate good cost of $9,000 from the steel that they purchased, that gives us a value added of $12,500. If you add up the value added for all three of those firms, you get $21,500. This is the true value of GDP for this economy as it does not double count any of the resources. But wait, you might be saying, isn't it the same as the car producer's value of sales, the value of the car itself? Yes, indeed it is. 
The car is the only final good produced in this economy, and the cost of the car, therefore, includes the value of all the resources used to produce it. We'll discuss that more in a moment. Let's do an example question. Enchanté Incorporated, a designer clothing company, buys $400 worth of silk from a silk trader and $30 worth of accessories from Accessories RS to produce each dress. If the value added by Enchanté is equal to $200, then according to the value added approach, the price of the designer dress should cost the consumer what? This question wants us to find the price the seller should sell the dress for in the market. The sales price of a good should include in it the value of all the resources used to produce the good. The underlined sections of text tell us what was spent to make this dress. $400 for silk, $30 of accessories. We are given the value added for the firm as $200. And remember, value added is the sales price minus the value of all the intermediate goods purchased to make the item. So, if we add up the value of the intermediate goods and the value added by the dressmaker, we get a sales price of $630. And that's it for section two. I'll see you in a bit.